Hey friends, today's read aloud is going to be an informational text. It's called The Dreamtime of the Australian Aborigines. What I want you to do is focus on the facts that you hear and how those facts are related to the main idea of the text. Okay, here we go. The first time I'm going to read it all the way through. Then the second time I'm going to pause for think alouds to tell you what I'm thinking about while I'm reading. Here we go. The dream time of the Australian Aborigines. Around 40,000 years ago, humans first came to Australia. They walked across a land bridge that existed back then. Not long after the humans inhabited Australia, the oceans rose. Rising ocean levels swallowed up the land bridge and left the people cut off from the rest of the world. These people were the Aborigines. Aborigines lived in, a small, lived in small groups on their own continent. Aborigines lived a rich life in a place with plenty of food. There were no predators to fear. Over time, they began to tell stories. These stories explain how the continent was created. The spirit beings came up from under the ground. They dug out the river valleys. They pushed up the mountains. They made the water holes. Wherever the spirit beings went, they left sacred places. The people's stories were soon being retold as the dream time. The dream time became more than just stories about the past. It taught the Aborigines how to behave. Dream time told Aborigines about secret ceremonies for men and women. Children learned how to share food and water and being help and be helpful a helpful member of society. Aborigines learned not to fight, brag, or try to push other people around. As a result, they lived in peace. They had no wars or poverty, and everyone had a place in the community. Dreamtime was a sacred way of life for people. Each Aborigine was spiritually connected to an animal or a place. The elders or older members in each group decided on the match between a person and a specific animal or location. The connection became that person's own unique dreaming. The person's connection might be the emu dreaming or the rainbow snake dreaming. That match became his or her personal lifelong guide. As the Aborigines migrated across their territory, the dreaming guided and helped with the journey. Their story became a song that taught survival skills to new generations. Today, the Aborigines give voice to the same songs as their ancestors. Their, ch their children's children will walk into the future singing the dreaming. The Aborigines invented the boomerang. The boomerang is a weapon that, once thrown, circles back to the person who threw it. Aborigines created the didgeridoo. The didgeridoo is a hollow musical instrument. It makes a steady moaning sound. Many people say that the greatest contribution Aborigines made to the human race is the dream time. The Aborigines' own special outlook on outlook on life uh, outlook on life lives on today. All right, so I know that was a little bit tricky to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'll read it again. A lot of times when something's tricky, reading it again is a really good thing to do. And this time I will be doing some think alouds for you as I read. Okay. Here we go. The dream time of the Australian Aborigines. 
Around 40,000 years ago, humans first came to Australia. They walked across a land bridge that existed back then. Not long after humans inhabited Australia, the oceans rose. Rising ocean levels swallowed the land bridge and left the people cut off from the rest of the world. These people were the Aborigines. Aborigines lived in small groups on their own continent. Aborigines lived a rich life in a place with plenty of food. There were no predators to fear. Over time, they began to tell stories. These stories explained how the continent was created. The spirit beings came up from under the ground. They dug out the river valleys. They pushed up the mountains. They made water holes. Wherever the spirit beings went, they left sacred places. That means like really special and spiritual. The people's, sto the people's stories were soon being retold as the dream time. The dream time became more than stories about the past. It taught the Aborigines how to behave. Dream time told Aborigines about secret ceremonies for men and women. Children learned how to share food and water and be helpful members of society. Aborigines learned not to fight, brag, or try to push people around. As a result, they lived in, as a result, they lived in peace. They had no wars or poverty, and everyone had a place in the community. So from reading this, what I'm gathering is this, this dream time started out as a story about how Australia became a continent and how all the landforms were made and so on. Then it became a, um, it became kind of a, a way of life for the, for the Aborigines. It taught, it taught them lessons and it taught them how to act like a good citizen in their society. So here's more of my think aloud. I can see from the title that this article is about something called dream time. I'm going to, I'm going to keep reading. I feel like I kind of know what it means now, but I'm going to keep reading to see exactly what it means. So like I said, dream time is made up of stories that tell, to tell about how the land was created. And this article here is telling me that people that the, that the people, the Aborigines, made up these stories. And another thing that I can really do from this story is I can learn more about the Aborigines based on learning about their dream time idea that they had. All right, here we go. Dream time was a sacred way of life for people. Each Aborigine was spiritually connected to an animal or place. The elders or older members in each group decided on the match between a person and a specific animal or location. The connection became that person's own unique dreaming. The person's connections might be the emu dreaming or the rainbow snake dreaming. That match became his or her personal lifelong guide. As the aborigines migrated across their territory, the dreaming guided and helped with the journey. Their story became a song that taught survival skills to new generations. Today, the Aborigines give voice to the same songs as their ancestors. Their children's children will walk into the same, into the future singing the dreamy. The Aborigines invented the boomerang. The boomerang is a weapon that once thrown circles back to the person who threw it. Aborigines created the didgeridoo. The didgeridoo is a hollow musical instrument. It makes a steady moaning sound. Many people say that the greatest contributions Aborigines made to the human race is the dream time. The Aborigines own special outlook on lives today. On, sorry, I messed up on that sentence before. The Aborigines own special out, outlook on life lives on today. So basically it was just the way that they looked at life. By the way, you should totally look up a video of a didgeridoo because they're really cool instruments. And I would try to make this sound for you, but it's really hard to do. So I'm going to tell you how to spell it. So go get a pencil and a paper. And I'm going to spell it right now. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause. Okay. D-I-D-G-E-R-I-D-O. Oh, that's how you spell didgeridoo. 
you should look look it up, see what it looks like, see what it sounds like. They're actually really cool. Okay, here we go. Here's my think lab. Now, I realize the author uses text structures of sequence and description to explain how the Aborigines came to Australia and created the dream time. As I listen, I learn the details of the dream time. I hear details in different paragraphs that explains how the Aborigines lived within their environment. I understand how the details the author reveals connect to the survival of the Arig Aborigines over time. I can understand how the dream time helped Aborigines live in their society. I see that the stories taught Aborigines to interact peacefully. I see how the dream time shaped Aboriginal culture in the past and how it can shape the future. So I'm going to go back to that when I said that the author uses sequence. I can see where the author uses sequence because it starts out at the very beginning where it says around 40, 40,000 years ago, humans first came to Australia. So it, it kind of tells it in order of when they first came to Australia and then they created the dream time. And then it even goes on to talk about how, um, how today many people say that the greatest contribution Aborigines made to the human race is the dream time. And it talks about how now today the Aborigines give voice to the same song as their ancestors. So it goes from the very beginning all the way to today. And that would be the author using the text structure sequence. And the author also uses um, description to explain more about dream time, to help the reader learn more about dream time. Okay, so we are going to explore these text structures a lot this week, and you will be looking into some text structures that you see in your um, and in your in our story weird friends this week so just keep an eye out for some of those and we'll make sure we talk more about them keep that anchor chart handy because those will tell you what the text structures are that you should be looking for all right my friends have a wonderful day